I am Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then buddy, you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. Three, two, one. What is that? Can you hear that? Laugh? I can hear. I yeah. know exactly what that is. I know Toxie does. Correct. Mm-hmm. Look at George. George just went in. Tucked he went to get his here. rifle. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I asked that we start this 55 minutes ago. What, yeah. what, what in the world is taking us so long to get well, started? You know, it takes things. a while to make quality squirrel and dumplings, and we needed to get pumped up for the show today by having a little bit. So. I think that's what it is. Vandy did an excellent we job. We could have started 30 minutes ago, but... It wasn't quite coming second, off the bone well, good enough yet. Well, seconds and thirds. Hello, Dudley. Yeah, that's true. Still Dudley, Dudley, Dudley still got a bowl. Yeah. How was it, Doug? Oh, my God. It's good. It's got that shine on the top of yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. What is that shine, Dudley? That's that good shine. Yeah. You know, just good home-cooked food. That Always sheen. has that sheen, that yeah. shine on it's it. It's actually a layer of fat. That's what makes it <laughs> yeah. so good. Dudley's turning his head like he's got a crick in his well, neck. Well, he's trying not to, He's trying to keep the audio good. I know he, you know, he's trouble. With he's that. trying. Yeah. yeah, I got in trouble for moving last week, and now he's just going to face forward. Yeah. So. Well, I'm real excited about this one. Looking down the table, we got Toxie sitting here. We're talking squirrels, so you know he's going to be here. We've got a, a kind of a little local legend. Yeah. This is your second time to come here, and uh, I don't think anybody in this area. Knows more about squirrels than George Brown. Nope. And, and I mean, if you, I've asked around, who's the squirrel guy in this this part of the state? And everybody keeps pointing back to George Brown. Mm-hmm. And we're excited to have you here, George. You've been a friend of the business for a long time. You you are a retired state trooper. You have written, uh, probably written everybody in this room a ticket at one time. He had a chance to, that's for sure. You let <laughs> Lanny out of your grasp one night when he was a youngster. And he tells that story all the time. Does he? Yeah, he does. Thank, thank you, George. <laughs> <laughs> but so you're a retired state trooper. You work for the Mississippi Ag Department now as a police officer. Is that right? We're an investigative team for the Department of Agriculture. We investigate agriculture crimes, timber theft, tractor theft, cattle theft. If you have a farm and they steal it, we'll investigate it. Yeah, there you go. That sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you know, you're you're a law enforcement officer. You teach. T- Taekwondo, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to. Don't want to mess with George. You don't want to mess with George. No, you you really don't. So (laughs) he's got Mr. Haney. He is not. (laughs) You got a. uh, So you got a beautiful wife, Missy, and you got a a, a young daughter, Shelby. She's. uh, I think she's just graduated from college. So just kind of almost. She's in grad school now. Wow, nice. Wow, they grow up fast. They do. Well, today, guys, we want to talk about what I want to try to do. I'm looking at Tyke. He's sending emails to somebody. No, I'm not. He's, he's, no, I'm he's not. down there. I am not. He's on Facebook or something. No, I'm not. TikTok. But, but what, what I want to try to do, and Mike, I need you to help us. We're going to fact check a bunch of stuff today. But I want to try to set right the wrongs that we as deer hunters have done to squirrels. I think in the mid-1980s, when we all started turning our attention to deer, that we kind of let the squirrels fall by the wayside and the and the statistics back it up i mean i was talking with ricky flint back in uh uh in the mid 1980s there were 160,000 squirrel hunters in mississippi and they killed an average of two and a half million squirrels that's a bunch of squirrels today there are 34,000 squirrel hunters in mississippi and they're killing just under a million squirrels so mac do the math on that uh, a million squirrels divided by 34,000 hunters that's a lot of squirrels but that's a whole lot of squirrels it's not like it used to be no i, I think I, you know i was introduced to hunting through small game hunting oh my but by four my first mm-hmm. my first thing was squirrels yeah, yeah. and I, I guess i didn't have access to a lot of deer hunting my dad grew up walking from the house quail hunting and we grew up walking from the house rabbit and squirrel hunting well, we didn't have deer. Too. Yeah, didn't have deer around where here. I, so. Where I grew up hunting in South Alabama had an abundance of deer, but we right. had basically none. I mean, right. people would drive out to look at a deer track when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. And it was the so first few. first season that really kind of opened so you could, you know, get out. And it was a ride it. of passage. No doubt about it. And look, talk about honing your hunting skills. I mean. Oh, they're tough. It's tough now. Especially well, and, and the 
all the subconscious and peripheral experiences of being yeah. in the woods and every different tree mm-hmm. and what's going on there. And um, I, one of my favorite comments or analogies to make about it, I was saving until later, but I'll just blow it out there now. <laughs> it's like a mini turkey hunt. I mean, you just played the oh, yeah. noise. Oh, yeah. And so time after time after time in the morning, and especially where I prefer to hunt is with the quietest 22 possible. And you have, you know, you, with your ears, you have another hunt. It's similar to, I guess it'd be stalking turkeys, yeah, so to yeah, speak. But yeah. still, you have the same. Slipping up on If you one. enjoy you that, like you know, locating something and then hunting it, you have a chance to have six or eight or ten. Or, you know, if you don't get your limit and you get some get away, quite a few encounters and hunts that mm-hmm. make it so much fun. It is fun. As opposed to just sitting somewhere waiting on something, you know. It's just one of those things once you get kind of tuned into it. And then, you know, plus later in the year like this, getting one where you can get situated to get a good, you know, there's not a lot of people can just freehand a squirrel at no. 50, 60 yards. No. I've known a couple. <clears throat> one of them was an ex-sniper in the military, but not many people do that. So there's an art to getting around to get a rest in the right spot too and all. So it's a, there's so many little mini hunts within a squirrel hunt. Unlike, uh, you know, other sports. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't disagree with you. But, well, I hope not. But what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is we have all turned our interest yes. to, toward deer to the point where that we may have let the squirrel kind of fall yeah. down the totem pole a little bit. It sounds bit. like the squirrel hunter's got more opportunities than he ever has, though, you know, if he's well, willing to get out well, there. Well, that's right. I mean, you, you might could argue that. It's, you know, used to it seems like you could pull over the road at any woodlot and go squirrel hunting. Yeah. Or you had a lot of places. Now, um, if you tell somebody you want to go squirrel hunting on their land, you know they're going to say you're going to booger up the deer hunting. That's exactly right. Huh. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's actually some of my because some of my best early season bow hunting spots that I would consider typically are great squirrel hunting spots because I'm thinking about you know the first mass trees fall, especially ground. acorns, yeah. and how you know how attractive and how good that is right at the beginning, at least you know when it's limited. Yeah, and and uh, George. We're going to get into this. We're, believe it or not, we're going to ask you some questions. But you, we, we've got two scenarios. we got steel hunting, which, which as gamekeepers, I think we all really like that because it makes property quiet. But, Richie, you've got some audio of some dogs. So this is a squirrel hunt. That And, and listen to this now. I, I, boy, that's... That sounds like that, music to my that, ears. That's, that is music. A, a dog person. Look at George smiling. Yeah. That's his dogs. He knows that. But, boy, that's a lot of noise on the property. That squirrel now. dogs? That sounded like my laundry room when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. All my labs are hungry. Yeah. What's going on there? Those dogs have treed? They have. Now, you you really like the dog hunt, I don't do. you? Oh, it's so much Oh, fun. man. Come on. I mean, look, just because you love one doesn't mean you can't love them both. It's kind of like your kids and, you know, you one of them gets a lot of attention because yeah. they hit a home run or she made straight A's or whatever. That doesn't mean you don't love all the other ones just as much. Yeah. You know, it's just not one or the other. So you can love them both just as much, right, George? That's right. I do. So, so George, do do a lot of people tell you, nah, George, I'd rather you not come hunt right now with the dogs. Let's let deer season get over. I bet you hear that a lot. I do. You? I bet you get a lot more open doors February 2nd. That's right. Yeah. Then, then in February, they're all pregnant and they're all in the dens. So February's normally not a good month. No. But I learned that when they first had the February squirrel season, I think it was in Alabama, and I was like, I'd been bow hunting on a lease we had down there. It was really good. And there was they never had squirrel hunting, like a lot of places. And it was just like a zoo. It was like hunting in City Park. There was so many squirrels. And they were so, you know, tame. It's like, this is going to be so much fun. So I waited after deer season was over, and I saw maybe three or four squirrels all morning. They were wilder than the hardest hunted public place you ever it, they change their gear they completely by that time of year you can speak to it more than me but it was a wake-up call for me it's tough that time of year no matter what mm. yeah I, I just learned something i i had no idea oh we had george down with the guest and, and i know you were reluctant because it was late in the season but i'm talking about a a, a, a ch- chunk of hardwoods down in knoxby county that there's no way we weren't killing kill a squirrel but wrong time of year so, Which brings a great topic about this, not just the love of squirrel hunting overall, but if you love to get out in the woods like I'm going to say 90% of who's listening to this do, there are other opportunities that you don't have. Like they even have a May squirrel season now, right? They do. I think it's in Mississippi and Alabama both. And what you deal with, there's a late season and 
there's times when you really don't have anything else you can do much. And so, especially, you know, people love to deer hunt so much. It, the deer season's not in. So, but what I was going to get George to talk about, too, was like the differences in hunting in February as you were starting to lose, too, and also what it's like to go in May because it's different than the opening in the fall, which is probably just like deer is probably the, the best time, you know. Yeah, May is really hot. You have to contend with the mosquitoes and the ticks and the chiggers, and then mm. then you got all the leafy. Just it's don't discourage people. Really hard to find. Yeah. So right now we're we're right at the end of November. Thanksgiving just happened. We we're all we all enjoyed that. But some of the 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 event weather event we had last night probably Ooh. blew a lot of leaves off trees. But prior to that, they were about half defoliated. So. Speak from that perspective. When do you like to start? Obviously, probably at the very beginning. But is there a piece of a month or so, a, a, some a, a, a window that you like that you boy, this is the best squirrel hunting there is. Well, if you got a dog, December is the, is the month because they're usually rutting during that time. The leaves have all fallen off, and that's that's prime. That's as good as it gets usually in December. And that's I'm, that's I'm around taking here. Notes. Now I don't yeah. know about other areas, but I know here December. And some of January is really good, but after that it starts going downhill, and then the females are laid up in the dens, and they come out. But when they they come out and do whatever they're going to do, and they go right back in the hole, and once they're in the hole, they're they're kind of on base. You can't hardly get them out. Yeah. But I still go just because I enjoy being out and listening to the dogs tree. Even if I don't kill anything, I had a good time. It was good. So what that rut? You know, I know we're all familiar with the whitetail rut. I mean, is it? just that time of year and there's just that much more activity because it's, it's breeding season it is mm -hmm. it's breeding season a lot of times when you tree one during that time you'll tree several because it'll be a female and six a female. males you know mm -hmm. so i'm told that a female squirrel is only hot or in season for about six hours oh so it's not the 28 yeah, days you're yeah, told that yeah, 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 who whispered that to you yeah <laughs> who are you talking to about that bobby's yeah. always told things yeah. but he doesn't ever is that the lockdown yeah. phase yeah, well, six hours six hours so there's a lot of there's a lot going on in that squirrel <clears throat> squirrel yeah. right, right i didn't know that yeah the six hours six yeah. hours well, six just because he was told that doesn't mean it's to be <laughs> the factual well, truth but it told by very that would be a very interesting uh thing it would tell you that the pre-rut activity is probably pretty Intense. Yeah. yeah. She's okay. got to get bred in that six-hour window, and she's looking. She's looking for multiple. She's making a round. I have. I have been. <laughs> I will say. Yeah. I have been before. That was during deer season, and it was like there was two or three squirrels chasing one, and it didn't matter what happened. If you killed one, they paid no attention to the shot even going off. So I guess that was what was going that, on. That definitely sounded ready to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine. So let's back up and let's start. What I'd like to do is inspire people that are listening to this to go. You know what I need? I want to go squirrel hunting again. Yeah, I haven't done that a long time. time. But so George and Toxie both, y'all are both big squirrel hunters. And Lanny, you saw a squirrel the other day. I, think. I did see you one. You know, Lanny had a pet squirrel, guys. I don't know if y'all knew. I did this. too. I did, I did too. Yeah, Toxie did too. Well, what was yeah. mine's name? Was Petey? What was yours? Fifty-five name? years ago. Yeah. Well, Timmy. Mine's Yours was Petey. Mine was Timmy Tippy Toes. Mine was 35 years ago. Well, so you know, Neil. In the 60s. Neil had one that he brought to the yeah. office well, every day. Yeah, it was over there. Y'all kept it up. Yeah, see, there. I'm not. Had it I'm, at the nursery. I'm not alone. There's no, multiple you're, people with pet squirrels. You know, around you're, here. you're not as odd as I thought you yeah, were. I don't know. I'm pretty odd. But he even around took here, his, I don't stick out near as bad. He even <laughs> took his squirrel to a Mississippi State football game. In one his time. pocket. Yeah. He went to an alley. Actually, the story goes, he took it to in his pocket to the Alabama football game. And. That's where he, one of the first times he met his wife. Hey, there you go. How about that? That's how important squirrels are. Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> well, he did good. That squirrel yeah, did. did good. That's it the did. Show. It so, did. So uh, let's let's think about this, George. I want, I want to I want y'all to both kind of weigh in here. But I'm gonna look at it, George, first. So you get out of the truck. It's before daylight. What's hmm. you, you're gonna walk into an area? What are you looking for? Are you gonna walk in to let it get quiet, sit down somewhere? Or are you are you walking in listening? What what's how do you do it? I usually try to get there right at daylight where I can see a little bit. I walk in, and I just lean up against the tree and listen. You know, look off in the distance. You'll see the limbs dip and sway. And, you know, usually that's a squirrel jumping from one tree to another. If I don't see any movement, I listen for them. Sometimes you can hear them cutting nuts. You can hear them running in the leaves or something, and I'll kind of start heading that way. You'll hear them squealing, making little squealing sounds, and I just start easing that way. and. Try to be as quiet as I can. Try to keep a tree between me and them. If you got a tree between you and them, 
I think it, they're less likely to see you moving, you know. 100%. So that a minute ago, Richie played that uh, that squirrel barking. <laughs> so what what kind of vocal is that? What's going on there? Well, when they're make, doing the sound that Lanny just did, I think that they're, something has alarmed them. They're, they're buzzing. Look, yep. they're, they're looking at something. I've seen them do it at deer a bunch. In deer walking, I have too, and sometimes they're doing it at you. Mm. Yep. Oh, absolutely. They and messed up. Yeah, but usually, play that, Richie, if you could. usually when they're doing that, they're really hard to find because they're sitting still, and they'll – They'll flip their tail yep. up and down, yep. but they're not doing a lot of moving no. back and forth. Yeah, and they're doing that little squeal. They're to me yeah. the hardest to find of all. Uh huh. The little whine uh -huh. kind of thing. Yeah, they're yeah. like they're actually. I think a lot of times I find them finally barking like that. They're sitting out in the wide open. They're just not moving much, and so you have to maybe see the tail flicker. But that little whine thing, when I hear that and try to go to it, I'm like, this is going to be work. Yeah, because they're you, like laying low somewhere usually when they're doing that, or see, laid flat on a limb. I think we've talked about this before, though. You know what the, the tail twitch is? No, what is it's it? It's a defense mechanism. So, like, they're making that noise, and if they do get seen, they're twitching that tail. So, if it's a predator or avian or anything else, it attacks the end of the tail and not the body. So wow, that's, why that's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Had not heard Did that. Did not know that. Dropping I know some knowledge on there you. Go. There you that, go. That. Uh, <laughs> This is one thing that my dad went to, uh, Mr. Fox, as everybody knows him. He went to home with one of his best friends over in Louisiana that was renowned. Uh, and he would actually have the uh, a squirrel call, like a squirrel in distress. The little whistle And he thing? would take, uh, he, had, he cut a couple of palmettas and cut, cut them down just a little bit so it wasn't quite so floppy. And he would beat those things on the ground and, and squall like a squirrel in distress. Mm -hmm. And Daddy said squirrels went started barking and fussing like that all over the place. But... And I've done it, and I've had limited success, some, but here was, here was the difference. That's why I'm bringing it up to see what George thinks. He's, they had probably 80% fox squirrels, hmm. and we probably got a good 80% or more cat squirrels here. And so he said, yeah, you know, now that I think about it, most of the ones that was cutting up so much about it were the big red fox squirrels. So it's probably something works better on them. Have you tried that or seen people do that? No, I hadn't, but – that, it always sounds like an alarm sound to me, so I'm thinking if I make right. that sound, I'm just alerting them. So I've never done it, but going by what he said about the fox squirrels, I've actually had fox squirrels walk out on the end of the limb and look at me. Barking and, at you. And bark at yeah. you. Now, the black, the gray squirrels won't do that. They're they're much more savvy. And, and a fox squirrel, once he's hid, he thinks he's hid. I mean, you can shoot and miss him, and he won't move. But a gray squirrel, you get one chance at him, and, and he's on That's the run. That's what I've always the, the fox squirrels are just not as, you know, whatever. They're not as spooky, if, for lack of a better word. So do you see a lot of fox squirrels these days when you when you hunt? No, not a lot. So do you, if you're hunting in an area that you know there's not a lot of fox squirrels, if you tree one with a dog or you're hunting, do you, do you think, well, I'm probably not going to, I might let that one go. But I have left some of them. Because you just don't see them as much as we, you. Yeah. Well, like we have, a, we have a ton of them. We got a lot of them. But okay. Like in the prairie, it seems well, like. Well, they were like where I grew up hunting. They would only be in, quote, unquote, the piney woods. Yeah. You never see them in the river swamp for whatever reason. And so I noticed we have a ton of them around these pastures and fields and mm -hmm. stuff. And you'll see them just run across the ground, wide open spaces where I don't see that as much out of the gray squirrels. Now, where my house is, is hardwood trees and stuff. And I, I don't ever see them, actually. I'm thinking about it now. They're all gray squirrels. But out in the country, right around the cabin, there's a lot of pastures and open ground like where Shamula is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, of pa uh, prairie. Of and there. there's there's quite a few squirrels. There's, I'd say there's almost half and half about squirrels there. Mm -hmm. They seem to be in more like upland areas for some reason, you know. Kind They're, of semi-open. They seem to yeah. like semi-open yeah, areas. Yeah, I think exactly. they like that old prairie habitat with the big scattered savanna trees. Yeah, that's what it seems like. It almost like, cabin. you know, like you see them a lot at the golf course. Mm -hmm. But again, that's just one of the one of the subspecies of fox squirrels. I mean, there's yes, the, yes. the fox squirrels in the Mississippi Delta that you find in the hardwoods, and they're, you know, right. that that litter can have black or red squirrels. Yes, just like they, Labr you know, Labrador dogs. They finally gotten dogs. around here for the first time. I know uh, Neil had shot one a year or so ago and going to get it mounted. But they've seen as many in three as three in one morning. It was all in the same little area up there. And I was like, don't shoot them. Let's just don't shoot them anymore. See if they'll spread, spread out, out some, you know, because I have seen them in the Delta, down in the South Delta, like Rolling Fork type mm -hmm. area when I hunted a time or two. Great big, huge black 
jet black squirrels. They're just beautiful. And some, I think, have a white nose like the fox squirrel. Huh. Is that right? It seems to be. Yeah. Do you see them around here at all? No. I've never seen a black one here. I've seen them in the Delta. Yeah. But I've never seen any black ones. They definitely made it up there. I hope they spread out. And I told them just, I caught them off limits from now on. One other question along those lines. Do you see a difference in the quality in eating like a fox squirrel versus a gray squirrel? Or are they both just as good? They seem to be equally good. Pretty good with them dumplings. I always yeah, thought I, so. That was delicious. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, so, so, growing up, if I hadn't repeated myself a hundred times, <laughs> that was our favorite table fare yeah. in the whole family. I mean, it was automatically recognized by everyone. It, grand's or my mom. How would she grand, cook them? You know, she basically, I, honestly, we got to go over there and record the recipe, but she would have the iron skillet, and she would brown them mm-hmm. with a little bit, I guess, of flour or something flour and them. some other, you know, butter and whatever. She would brown them really good, and she had just that deft touch, and then she would slow, slow, slow cook them like to death. And, I mean, it was already, you didn't have to thicken a gravy when you pulled it out. It was ready to roll just like it was. So that was a whole squirrel with, laying in With the grits, yes. Well, they cut them. She cut them in Quartered half. Quartered them. Yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah, she pretty much just cut them in half usually. And all those hams were the best, always. That was a delicacy. But they were so unbelievably good. I've never taken anybody over there over the years that didn't just – their jaw dropped when they first tasted it. Mm-hmm. And she would have the grits. And, you know, of course, she knew just how to cook grits too. And, you know, whatever else went with it was just academic. You know, that was, that was the – and the best thing of all was – and I said this earlier – Pick the meat, all the rest of the bone. That's the one labor of love of squirrels is the bones. But it's not that big a deal, honestly. But picking all the meat off the bones, and it would just fall off anyway the way she cooked them. And then just and then pour the gravy on that and mix it in with whatever grits are left over. And you talk about leftovers to um, five-star leftovers, <laughs> seriously. And she would take and toast, toast, butter toast, and then like an open-faced sandwich with that on top of it mm-hmm. for the next day. And uh-huh. I'm telling you, it's out of this world. It's so good. So we've got to pass along more recipes. And honestly, yeah. I think the same thing, like you would cook them, and like we cooked them today, Bandy and Sam, um, I think would work with other game animals. For I know sure. it would be, yeah, good. Yeah. I know oh, it'd yeah. be great with quail. Yeah. Probably be okay with some other stuff, duck and dove, possibly. My mom used to do it with dove. That's <clears> when you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. how my mom did it. Yep, dove. yep. Yeah. Yeah, I bet rabbit should be good. That oh way, yeah, for sure. but there's there's a depth. Just like mm-hmm. going to eat the the fried chicken at Waverly, we have the best fried chicken in the in the whatever in a ten state area here in West Point, Mississippi. <laughs> and on Friday, you can go get the fried chicken out here at Waverly, and it's incredible. And there's just a depth touch. Right, that's what I was getting at to the way they do it. And you could go by the recipe book. It's not going to be the same. But it might not be the same because there's the little things and someone who's had a lifetime of cooking. And so there's some little things with my mom, how she did that. We've got to get over there and get recorded for the world to have going forward. Because she had little idiosyncrasies about how she did it and time things that I like to get, you know, for yeah. everybody. And we've never done it. I'm going to do it, and we're going to put it out there for everyone. George, does your wife enjoy she squirrels? does. It, yeah. does. Does she cook them for yeah, you? She does. She most times she fries them, mm-hmm. but she's got a recipe where she bakes them in the oven too, and, and they like that the best, the baked ones. Mm-hmm. I like the fried ones myself. I love fried ones. Yeah. If they you know, like like I was saying, someone has to know what they're doing, but it is delicious. So I've always heard. I've never had them, but there's some old country folks. I shouldn't say there's old. Country. There's some people that well, like. You consider me an old country <laughs> folk because I know what you picked them. Yeah, yeah, some I know people what you like to say too. Uh, the brains. 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 Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Do you I like have, them, Lanny? I, well, I'm, I've never eaten them. I don't eat organs. I mean, they don't hate on me. I do love. I love a duck heart, by the way. But um, you know, I kind of send away from the organs. But uh, that being said, there was a uh, a gentleman that actually they've passed away now that lived in my neighborhood and religiously. They uh, cleaned, cooked squirrels, and ate squirrel brains and eggs. What about you, Dudley? You you like them? I'm I'm probably not going to eat a squirrel brain, but how are the dumplings? They're great. I can hear you licking your lips. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Richie gave me a mean look. Yeah. <laughs> All right, George. Let's go back to. I want to wrap up with you. You didn't on ask that. him about brains. Yeah. That, well, I, I know about George. I'm like Lanny. I don't eat brains. <laughs> <laughs> But it is a, a true thing. I mean, I, I know. I've oh, I've them had them. Lot. I've tried them. You have had them? I've been around a bunch of people. That with love eggs? Mm-hmm. Did you have them with eggs? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it wasn't my cup of tea. No. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, squirrel's awesome. It's, a, it's, you've, okay, just, it's I mean. you've got to, like, 
parboil it or or braise yeah, it, you've got to slow cook it. it Otherwise, mm-hmm. it's a lot of tendons and bones. In yeah, it. you just if you don't do it right, it's well. There, let's face it. Think about it. It makes sense because I've said it forever, and I'll challenge anybody on this. They are the best athlete in the woods. No doubt. Possibly the animal kingdom. I'm sure there's stuff around the globe Mm -hmm. to challenge them. But I've never seen – sit in a bow stand and just marvel at them. It's It's, it's fun to watch them. Well, think about the kind of muscle fiber it takes to be that kind of performance athlete. (laughs) And so, sure, it would be that way. In the same way, you know, if you don't handle venison properly, you know. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. But it does have a different, completely different type of flavor than, like, deer. Oh, it's – or dove even it's mm-hmm. it's a lot honestly it's a lot milder and not very as mild. gamey it's per se mild, yeah man. very mild mm-hmm. i mean if someone who's never experienced that uh and you know go squirrel hunting clean them take care of them you know doing it all yourself is such a cool thing and try one of the recipes that we have for people i mean you're really missing out to not at least give it a try mm-hmm. yeah i'm with you man. so i want to circle back george so you're in the woods and you've you, you're trying to identify you're seeing branches but what so you keeping a tree between them what are you're shooting a 22 most of the time and what what do you you what do you have your 22 zeroed in at what is it dead at like 35 yards so are you trying to get within 35 yards of that? i'd like to yeah that's your comfort but with subsonics if you get to say 50 yards if you hold just a just a fuzz high you'll hit him and i try to shoot them in the head when I can, that don't work all the time, but I try to. Yeah. So, you, so let's say you shoot a squirrel, he drops. And you, you're just gonna stay right there for a little I while st- and kind of see what what else right. is going on. I stay right there and just just wait. And a lot of times you'll you'll see four or five more. You know, within just a few minutes. Yeah. A lot of times, if you're patient, I noticed this from hunting with Daddy over the years. I'd watch him and he'd see a squirrel. He didn't rush in. You know, he'd get all excited and start easing up right. That's when he would just sit there a little while, you know. Especially if he knew he was had a in a good piece of woods and he had, you know, yeah, he wasn't worried about. It. He would actually try to locate a couple ahead of time so that when he shot, you know, he might be shooting on. two instead of one. Yeah, yeah. or or he knew or where he was going to go next. Right. Yeah. And if you wait, like sometimes if you wait just a little bit, you found one. Even if you get in position, you find one. You know he hadn't seen you and you're in good shape. If you wait just a minute, now you may lose them, but. Another one might show up too. So if you have, especially with a suppressor, you shoot the first one. If there's another one with him. He's probably just going to stop for a second. What was that? And not just take off running right away. So you might just get two. Boom, boom. You know. I have had two playing, and shoot one, and one fall out, and the other one run down the tree to look at him to see what's wrong. Yeah. Mm. And with that a suppressor. Su- with a suppressor, yeah. then yeah. you get the second one. <laughs> and I will say too, without without a doubt, the best suppressed like whatever caliber of all of them is the 22 rifle. There's no contest. It is closer to the normal performance of any rifle. You just think it's easy to do the numbers and the feet per second and all the differences. And uh, you almost can't tell the difference, to be honest with you. I was so shocked when I finally got one. It shoots so hard, you know, compared are you, are, to a regular 22. Are, are yeah. you shooting subsonic? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because a subsonic with a big rifle, a 30 caliber or something, is pretty cool and all, but you lose so much Whoa. performance. It is like throwing, you know, a shotgun slug out there, or worse almost, in the difference. Now, it's quiet, and, I mean, if you get something close, and it doesn't have the knockdown of the other one. Yeah. But with the twenty two, you're crazy not to shoot. Yeah, there's only sonic. like 100 or 200, yeah. 300 feet per second difference. So, yeah, screaming twenty two is like 1,400 feet a second or something like that, isn't it? High yeah. velocity. Yeah. Well, it only it's just slightly under 1,100 feet per second, I think, to be subsonic. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't even lose that much, so you'd be crazy not to shoot subsonic in a 22 suppressed round. You don't gain that much by, and that crack is pretty dang loud. Once you it silence is. it, you realize mm-hmm. how loud a 22 really is. Oh, they're loud. Yeah, echo. It's so much fun. So I mean, the, so then, so you're gonna look for that that next opportunity, and then at some point you're gonna pick up and move on. Right. So, and and do you find that toward the end of the season <clears throat> that you it's harder to find squirrels. Do you feel like, well, I've shot most of the squirrels out of here, or is no. it just always some more? No, the, the days that they're moving, there seems to be plenty. And then when there's, you know, and when they're conversely, see, my house is where I just watch the behavior. I live in a laboratory for squirrels, so I don't shoot <laughs> I them do around too. the house. And there's so many, you can watch it. I mean, beautiful, crispy, frosty morning, <laughs> nothing. Dead silence at daylight, nothing going on. 
I mean, literally those super cold, frosty days with a high pressure are so good for deer moving. I don't see, especially now that, you know, all there's not much to eat in the trees anymore. That stuff's on the ground. But you let about 8.30 or 9 get around and some sun on the ground and stuff, and they'll be going everywhere. So I might as well sleep late days like that. Hmm. It's like when you have that cold snap, it's like they just want to stay in. So yeah. they wait for it to warm up a little bit. That's the way it seems to me. Yeah. I can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need a we need a Mississippi State squirrel lab so we can get more research done. About Apparently Bobby's got their somebody movement, in his pocket. Movement right. patterns and all of that. All you gotta do is text Bronson yeah. and he will he give, knows you, what's give, going give you some on. good That's information. Right. So yeah. We just need a website for George as a, as a <laughs> and then you'll be able to do it for him. So yeah. do the do the tactics change over the course of the fall and the winter? I mean Bobby was asking you about what you do if you're Obviously, still hunting without your dog, uh, what to do. Um, well, the woods are much open, so it would, it's harder to sneak up on them at that time. So I'd probably find a den tree or s several nests. And they love fallen trees, fresh fallen oak trees. If you sit and watch one, you're guaranteed you're going to see squirrels. They just, they just seem to gravitate toward them. And my dogs know it because when I, when I take them out, if there's a tree down, they immediately go to that tree and check on it. They'll... They'll run down the tree, and hmm. I mean, there's there's just so many different tactics. I mean, I've I've heard people say when they see a squirrel, they basically take off running at it and mm -hmm. try to get it, and some people sit still and wait for more to show up. You know, so like that's a question I had for you because I still remember good old John Phillips, who was our author buddy from forever, and he still loved is. to promote squirrel hunting. He loved squirrel hunting, but he right. just loved to interview. And write stories about people that like to squirrel hunt. And I remember going with him one time, and he, he said he'd heard from so many good squirrel hunters that, by and large, they live in kind of family colonies kind of stuff. And so my point in saying this is, say, we're going to strike out into a place you hadn't hunted before, or you got a lot of ground to cover, and you just, okay, how do I find squirrels? And he always said, you know, if you do run into one, you're much more likely to find more right around where that one is and then maybe have a little area that's a void that you don't find any. So anyway, that's, I'm just wondering if you found the same thing. They tend to be kind of in colonies and there'll be groups here and then a space with none. And then you find some, there'll be a good many more. Is that? I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've got places on my hunting club that if you drive by and look at it, it looks really good, but you very rarely kill a squirrel in it. And I really don't know why they're hardwood timber, Right. but for whatever reason, they're just not there. But then you got other spots where that seem to be really overloaded with them. But kind of getting back to what you said about killing them out, I used to hunt with an old man that was in his 80s, and he had 250, 60 acres that this guy let him hunt on, and he hunted it every day, and he told me that he killed 1,019 squirrels that year. Hmm. And I said, where did you kill them from? He said, right here. And I said, looks like you wouldn't have had any next year. And he said, had just as many as the next year. Hmm. So I, I don't know if it's like nature's way of when you take a bunch, maybe they, they have more later. Wow. I don't know. But I, you would think 1,019 out of a Yeah, he may have been. Even if he's stretching That's that a, a little bit. Squirrels. Yeah, the point is, it, it reminds me of the saying my buddy Rodney Johnson reminded me as I rode through some pine timber, and he really understands it. And there was a dead tree here and a dead tree there, and he said, don't sweat it. You know, don't worry about it. He said, you're – Surrounding trees will make up for the size and volume of that lost tree within just a year's time. Mm -hmm. It'll come right back. Now, now, if you had a big area, that might be different. He said, don't worry about it. Nature will compensate. And I think that's what the same thing you're telling us. Well, I think – Good point. Yeah, I think, you know, the squirrels don't – in the wild don't necessarily live a long time. But so I think a squirrel that's born this spring, she can breed that fall. So what's the average lifespan? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, so I'm told – Hit it, man. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, go Google that, Mac. But I'll tell you what I was told is that the average is less than a year. Really? Yeah, in the wild. But a, but a, like a squirrel well, like Petey could live 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Petey so, ran off after So it's because now. of predation. Well, I think – I'm just a, wondering if it normal without a hawk catching it or George getting a hold of it or whatever, well, what's the normal lifespan of a squirrel in the wild? I, hard, I have a hard time believing a year because there's such a big difference in the size of – what you kill sometimes too. Well, so George, I, let me just say this. Okay, so that so I was told. B Bing is disagreeing with you. Is that what? Yeah. yeah. Well, so you're. So, it's saying five to ten years. There you go. So what I was told is Thank that. you, Mister Know It All. Sorry, Mac. Beat you to the punch. But. What I was told is that most of them, 
don't make it a year. But then the ones that do learn that they, they are they, they learn what to eat, where to den, well, how to get away from predators, and those can uh, live that longer. But the average life of mo- most of them don't make it a year. That's what I was told. So I was thinking three to five, and I think they live longer than that because they know my dogs. <laughs> when my dogs bark, they get in the hole. And I'm yeah. thinking if he was only a year old, he wouldn't know that. Yeah. They yeah, that's a good point. No, they got to be. It's got to be more than a year. I mean, it has to be. I mean, you see the squirrels, you kill them this big and or this big, and then you kill some of those old boar squirrels or whatever yeah. a male's called. Man, good gracious, they're grown men. Yeah, <laughs> they really yeah, are. Just turn them over and look at them. Be, <laughs> yeah. be proud, son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, during, during, that, huge. Yeah, during, that, during that rut, those things descend, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, they sure do. Well, Bobby, I didn't study them that much. Yeah. <laughs> So what about Petey? Did you what happened to Petey? Uh, well, I, Petey, I raised him in the house in a you know shoebox, and I kind of moved him outside. Then I had him in a rabbit cage where he could come in and out. Uh, and then after he was a male, and after a year or a year and a half or so, he he ventured on off to uh, to I'm greener sure, pastures. The, the rut probably <laughs> pulled him away from the house. Yeah, but yeah. So what happened to you? Same thing. Ran same off. thing. Same. Ended yeah. up running off. Yeah. yeah. After about. Not even a year, probably. I think I was nine months or so. But real, that first, the, when he was little, he was very, very attached to you. Oh gosh! I mean, They're run up your pets. leg and yeah. would sit on your shoulder. I mean, we're really talking cool. about it. I'm glad it was thirty something years ago. It's probably illegal now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we're good on the whatever it's called. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're supposed to possess. We're good, George. Kind of Statue of Limitations. We're good, George. George yep. says yeah. we're good. <laughs> I don't. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anything illegal about thirty five years ago. Uh-uh. But I don't think you're supposed to possess a wild game animal without a permit or something in today's world. So yeah. Bobby wouldn't know nothing about that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, but it, it happens. So. <laughs> but the whole thing about uh, about how old they live, though, I, we'll, we'll drill into that. I'll ask Bronson to get his thoughts on that. But what's, what is your uh, – I, well, it's saying five to ten years, you know, but I mean, well, like like Bean knows what squirrel hunting is, you know what I mean? So, no, they, they'd have it from research. I mean, I'm sure there's – Caveats to like, are they squirrel or hunters getting them, or are they predated versus, you know? Or I guess all the other things are some kind of prevalent disease might knock them out sooner. But a normal lifespan of a squirrel is actually what we're asking, mm-hmm. you know. So, so that would be that ten years or whatever number. And then, then if you say, however, you know, a lot of them get killed early, whatever. That's a caveat to the normal lifespan. Yeah. Some of it's saying one to four. This sentence says in captivity, one has reached up to sixteen years. So, I'm kind of. I think it's more of one to four. So, George, when you ask around to get permission to go hunting on some places, if they've got deer feeders set up, does that just get you excited? Because is that a good place to start with a dog? No. The feeders seem to draw coons, but as far as squirrels, I don't see a lot of squirrels, you know, coming to them. Yeah, I would have thought. I would have thought that they would. I would have thought so too. But they I never do. thought about. They that. come to them some, but I will say from the pictures, it's. Ten to one coons over oh, squirrels. Always, always. Yeah. Do, do your dogs tree a coon too? Yeah, yeah they do. I think it's just the the the. I don't know how much a squirrel uses his nose. I know they don't like a coon does. So my guess is going to be you'll have some of the squirrels that were already right there discover that as a food source, and so if there's two or one or five right there. You might have those at that feeder, but. With coons and the way they travel and travel, the next thing you know, coons from a quarter mile in every direction know about it and just descend on and destroy your feeders. So that's why you have so many coons. And, you know, you'll see squirrels at a feeder, but I don't think it's attracting them from a long way, so it's not a lot there, you know. And it seems if you have acorns, it seems like acorns is their number one food. No, no. Because I have feeders around my house that I use to fool with my puppies. And back during the summer, they were – I mean, it was like 50 pounds a week. I was putting out 50 pounds of corn a week. Wow. And, and once when the acorn started, they completely quit the corn. I mm-hmm. still got corn sitting in there from two or three months ago. So do you think they prefer acorns over hickory nuts? I do. Or not hickory nuts. Now, I think hickory nuts is our number one. If they didn't have to work quite so hard at it, I'd but they don't. Too. You don't see hickory nuts. You know more about that than I do. But it seems like hickories don't produce every year. Mm-hmm. But when they do, they love them. Mm-hmm. But they're not like acorns. They don't produce every year. But if you can ever steal hunt and get in an area where you got some hickories, oh, it's a gold mine. It's, um, they're I there. Can hear, I can hear that hickory So uh-huh. do you – have you noticed a difference like in really heavy mast crop years versus, 
years where you had a poor crop? Uh, like, any tips on? Well, it seems like if you don't have a good acorn crop, you don't seem to have squirrels. If you have a good acorn crop, you seem to have plenty of squirrels. So it seems to kind of coincide with the food source. Okay. That's interesting. Would you have a, a, a an educated guess at maybe what a squirrel's home range would be? Hmm. No, I wouldn't. Let me let me ask. I've seen them go a, a pretty good you know distance, and I've had the dogs trail fox squirrels a fair distance. You know, I'm not saying a half a mile or nothing, but yeah. you know, several hundred yards and yeah. then trail them. So if you see a fox squirrel one afternoon when you're deer hunting, it, he's probably living right in there somewhere. I would think so. Yeah. Have you ever killed a squirrel uh, that was radio monitored or no. had a band on it? No, never have. <laughs> I didn't know they did such. No. Yeah, Hello. I didn't know either. I mean, I, I just don't think enough research is being done on squirrels. We're, we focus on deer and turkeys. We need to find out more. Find out more. You ever been bit I, by a squirrel? I'll say one other thing uh, no. we hadn't touched on is a major attractor to squirrels, and they will, I think, move further, a lot further than a corn feeder or something would do is when we have these super droughts, is water holes. Because hmm. I have sense. bow hunted water holes. It's been a while, mm -hmm. been 15, 20 years. And I actually went back to the water hole the next time and hung with 22 in the tree with me. And there was a big log that fell, ran out in the water, and I killed a limit of squirrels on the same log. And you just, all you had to do was wait five more minutes, and here came another one to get water. You know, so I mm -hmm. guess unless there's maybe some kind of heavy dew, they got to have water too. And I noticed anywhere around within, say, a quarter mile of that particular little pond, there was no other water out there. There were squirrels were everywhere. So I guess that could be a thing, you know, if you have, like, we've had this severe drought we had. I have yeah. noticed that, too. A friend and I used to hunt together, and he would always hunt next to the creek. And in the very beginning of the year, I hunted up on the hill, and he always killed more squirrels than me. And, I, and it was just driving me crazy trying to figure <laughs> out how he was doing it. And it dawned on me, I said, it's water. Mm -hmm. I said, they're, they're, they're at the creek because of the water. So I would try to hunt the close to the creek beginning of the year, you know, because it's normally dry and there's not mm -hmm. as much water mm -hmm. around. And it did seem like they were around the water. I'm going to bet you too, Dudley, the creek banks are the perfect environment for producing a heavy mass crop because you got a little more canopy, a little more sunshine, mm -hmm. well-drained, but access to water and everything like you might see with trees. There's sure. probably a lot of acorns falling more than average up and down the creek banks too. Yeah. Hmm. Let's shift gears just a little bit. No, so we, we've talked about steel hunting, which I think would be our preference. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about dog hunting because I've no. I've been with you. I enjoy it. I really do. I want you to talk about what got you interested and excited about squirrel hunting with a dog. When I was real young, there was a man lived across the road from me, and he invited me to go with him one day, and I was just hooked after that. I just, but I'm like Toxie now. I enjoy the steel hunting too. I, I enjoy both. Most of my dog hunting friends just want to dog hunt, but I like both myself. But that's what got me started is I went with him, and he had a bird dog. And back then we had dogs, but we really didn't have a specific breed. It was just whatever kind of dog you had that would tree a squirrel. And he had a bird dog, and, and, and it was a good dog. And I went with him, and that's kind of got me started and got me interested. And, it, and then that bird dog would tree a squirrel? Oh, yes. And was tough, too. Huh. He bait a skunk one time, Ooh, and the uh. skunk sprayed him till he run out. And then he killed that skunk. <laughs> you going to run out eventually. You know, I said, bite. that's a bad dude now. Yeah. John Wayne of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you allude to it a little bit. You said it doesn't seem that, that a particular breed of dog doesn't matter. Do, is there a particular breed that you are gravitated towards, or is it just any dog that can be trained for it? Well, I've, I've, as I've gotten older, I use mountain curs now. Mm -hmm. They're kind of specifically bred to be tree dogs. Mm -hmm. But back then, we didn't know nothing about a mountain cur. There was some people had feist, but I had a border collie one time that was a good dog. I had a tree and walker that was a good dog. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you seem to hear more about uh, terrier types like feist yeah. yep. and yeah. then the curs. The rat the, terriers. I remember, who was it? I think it was Carsey's dad had a rat terrier. They were doing it. What do you do when they're young? I mean, how do you figure out if he's going to be a good squirrel dog? You just see if he's looking just, up in the trees? No, nah, just take hides and play with him, drag him around, hang him up in a tree and see if he can follow the track, you know. And I eventually start catching squirrels in a cage, and mm -hmm. I let him bark at them. Then I do coons the same way. 
and sometimes I'll take the cage and just drag the cage with a cone in it, and I'll drag it around and hang it up. I didn't see the ghost. Too. I think I told you the story one time before. I, Mr. Fox, would, we'd always talk about squirrel hunting every time we got together, and, and they had a place out west of town, and it was some small pine trees. And I asked him, I said, be all right if I catch a squirrel and turn it loose in them pines? I said, because that dog can follow him through them small pines. He said, yeah, that'd be fine. So I was doing that and never crossed my mind about coons and possums. So I, every time I'd see Mr. Fox, I said, well, I, I turned loose three squirrels this week or something like that. And I told him, I said, I transplanted a possum the other week. And he said, <laughs> yeah. you did what? <laughs> <laughs> and I knew right by the tone, right quick, I said, that was wrong. I'm thing not going to do. do that again. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I said, it won't happen no more, I promise. He said, don't be doing that now. You know, dog hunters, that, that, whether you're a coon hunter or a squirrel hunter, they, they, those houndsmen, are, they, they, that's they, right. They are really passionate about yeah. their sport. Well, it's their team. It's yeah. their people. You know but I mean? all of us it have is. our dogs. Yeah. It's, there's something special. And yeah. I'd be, look, I, I've got a soft spot in my heart for all people. Yes, you do. Doing it the right way, the dog hunting. Yeah. You know, there's, unfortunately, there's some abuses that take place out there. But there's something special about dogs, period. You know, it oh, just yeah. makes it better. That like uh, we've got our new pup now. He's like almost a year old, Forrest, and everybody's old forest. heard about Forrest now. Mm, Forrest, old old Forrest. Forrest. <laughs> he's gonna be amazing. I mean, he's the star of the show in the house and everything. And Willa, his mom's there and all. But they was like, so, I mean, what's the deal? It's like, is this your pup? And that's the mom dog. What about what about Gus? I said, Gus is my business partner. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the way I describe it. It's just in my point in saying it. There's just this special thing he and I have that I will just. Take to my grave with me, even after he's gone someday, to, just, to go in together with him, me and him, and that bond. And it is it is real as the bond between me and George or me and Lanny or whatever. Oh, yeah. And that's what I love about it's changing gears a little about having dogs for people. We just specialize in the English labs because we love them. But any dog like that, there's just something so special you're missing out in life without that kind of bond. And it could be whatever, just walking every day or something. But there's something with all us outdoors people – if you get to hunt some of the sport you do, I don't care what it is, and have that dog and the bond of going with that dog, you're missing out. So Hunter's I'm just telling you. For life. Yes, it's, it's amazing. So, friend. you know, it's a little different, uh, you know, with the deer and you turn them loose and they run, and even coon hunting. But that, that, that close connection with the, the duck hunter, you know, or the dove hunter or whatever, pheasants and, and the retriever, is very close to that close, close connection with the squirrel dog, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, I I'm just a, saying, I can't keep going on and on about it, but it's, uh, it means so much to me, which I know it does. Everybody in here has got one just about. It's yeah. as real as it gets. You know, yeah, yeah. copper, yeah. Yeah. goose, all yeah. down the line. But, but that is I, – I strongly encourage – when I hit things that are hot button about getting the most out of your life, I go off like a preacher about them, but – Man, have some type of hunting you go do with a dog. It is so special. Care about it. But it's like Toxie said. It's. I think when you hunt with, like he said, with deer dogs or rabbit dogs, you have a bond. But a squirrel dog, it's like he's a partner. Yes. And it's like we're working together. And I told a friend of mine the other day, he's just gotten a puppy and he's training it. And I told him, I said, 12 years from now, you and that dog will be really close. I said, because you walk so much together, you spend so much time together. That it's like a partnership, and it's 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 really special. And when they die, it's really hard on you. It's oh, just yeah. like you l- lost huh. a family member. Yeah. You know. I got chill bumps listening to him talk because it's yeah. so real. Well, and you almost don't have to communicate to them. I mean, I'm, I'm on the way with my labs. You know, we're in the field doing the thing. After a certain point, they know what you're thinking, and you know what they're. I mean, right. it's yeah. crazy. It's really cool. So it's a partnership. I'm telling oh, you. Are you your hunt? That? Are your hunting dogs? Do you keep them? I mean, do they just hang around the house just like your pet, or do you? keep them no i got a kennel i keep them in but i let them out every day mm-hmm. i do something with them every day you know yeah. if it ain't nothing but come sit up on the tailgate and we just sit there together you know i just i do something with them every day well, Which, they, do, they, uh, too, do they know like when you get up early in the morning oh, do, they do mm-hmm. they do and and they know when hunt i know it sounds crazy but they know when hunting season oh, starts well, they don't think they it. don't because that north wind i guess that mm-hmm. i guess that cool weather or something mm-hmm. they start acting different you know and they start get a little frisky yeah uh-huh <laughs> yeah oh i'm 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 about on i do the, the edge same of, thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm about to have to figure out some kind of xanax to give gus because <laughs> he knows so. he knows it's time and we hadn't been yet so he's at where's the oh water? my gosh he 
wears me out. All the whole just he, like last night. I'm serious. I'm sitting there and I'm watching the weather. We got all these tornadoes and stuff. I'm trying to watch the weather, and you can't see this, you know, visually unless you're here. But I'm looking at the TV, and I turn my head to the right and I bump his nose because he's standing there and he's just staring at me so close. I mean, for minutes on end, not budging, moving, just staring at me like. When are we going? <laughs> and I literally turn my head and bump into his nose. He's so close there. And he just, everywhere I go, he's just following me because he knows his time. How about that? What are your dog's names, George? Oh, uh, got one named Buck and one named Lily. Now, but, uh, Have you bred them before and raised them? And I, the Buck, I raised him. Right. But I don't know if you bred a litters and I, sold them to the friends, gave them to the some, friends or whatever. Sometimes I do, yeah. but sometimes I'm. Um, well, I've put in a request with Richie. We want to do a TV show with you and your dogs. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, I really want that to happen in the next month or so. So Richie's okay. going to be getting with you to coordinate okay. that. And so, But, look, I feel like there's something about hunting with dogs that, that uh, some part of it we need to touch on and you need to explain a little bit better to folks because it's not as easy as just turning those dogs loose. Is it? Oh, I mean, you, no you still uh, – can you kind of explain how that goes? Cause I, well, it takes years to train a squirrel dog. I mean, it doesn't – like a deer dog or a rabbit dog, to me, they're they're pretty easy to train. But a squirrel dog, he's it takes a lot of time, and he has to learn to hunt with other dogs. He has to learn to hunt with other people. He has to hunt in strange areas that he's never seen before. It's uh, I personally think it takes three to five years for wow. a dog to be finished, hmm. to know his job and and to go out and do it. You know, does it help for him to hunt with another dog? Does that teach him a lot? Not Any really. Faster? Not, Not really. really. Just experience, period. Everybody thinks that, and I did too when I first started. I said, well, if I could only hunt my dog with a trained dog. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And he's got to learn it on his own. And if he learns that? it on his own, he gets it better. A lot of times if you're hunting with another dog, it's called a me too. Right. The other dog starts barking, he's saying me too, me too, you know, but he really don't know what he's barking about. Yeah. So it's really best to hunt them by themselves. And I've got one that didn't do anything until she was three years old. But I wouldn't give up on her because my daughter and I raised her, and the mama started killing the puppies. Oh, so, my goodness. So I called Leanne Simpson, and I said, what do I do? And she said, she's going to kill all the puppies. So I took the mama away like, from the puppies, yep. and I would go out every two hours, and I would take bring her to the utility room, and I'd hold her down, and I'd let the puppies suck. And then I'd go put her back up, and then two hours later I did wow. it again. Wow. And I kept that dog I got alive. And she pushed her out. Well, I found her out in the pasture one day. She had pushed her out trying to kill her. And it's just that bond. Yeah. I yes. said, you know, we, we we fought, me and Shelby fought hard to keep her alive. And and three years, it was just like one day she just treed. And it's like, I didn't know this is what you wanted, you know. And, oh, this is what you've been working Yeah. <laughs> yeah if you told me this sooner, we'd yeah. been going now. Yeah. man. What's up? I just said I was a poor trainer. <laughs> How do they learn to, you know, always, I guess I've always heard it's called tapping a tree when a squirrel jumps to another tree. How do you? Is there? How do you teach the dogs to watch for that? Is that something they just pick up on their own? I have no idea. Well, now, George, you I've always wondered me. how a dog even treats a squirrel. Because if you're a deer hunter and you sit in a tree stand, a squirrel will climb everything around that area for 50, 60 yards. I don't know how they ever determine which tree mm -hmm. he went up. And a lot of times he's not in the tree that they're treed on. He went up that tree, but he might have crossed over two or three trees. But she'll tree on this tree. And then I look at that tree, and then I start branching out looking at the other trees. And they are, if you hadn't ever done it, they are masters at hiding. I mean, a lot of times you'll only see a piece of hair mm -hmm. or an eye in a dark place. I told a friend of mine one day, I said, that squirrel is in that nest. I see its eye. And I could see something sparkling in there. Wow. So he shot, and he said, it ain't in there. I said, shoot again. And he shot again, and it fell out. <laughs> wow. But they're masters at hiding. Do you carry a pair of binox with you? I do now. I just started doing that. Mm -hmm. I had cataract surgery, and I can't see as good as I could. Okay. So I've been carrying binoculars. Man, that's a real art to someone who can just look in the woods and pick out a dead still squirrel. It's hard for me. I mean, when I hunt. I mean, I'm, I guess I don't get to dog hunt much. It's been years. But, you know, I'm kind of – did I hear the dripping from the same spot? You know, if you just hear an acorn fall, don't get too carried away. But if you keep hearing something falling in the same exact spot, better tune in and see what's going on. Or you hear one barking. Or you see a limb move way off. I'm always that. But you just look out in the woods 
and find one sitting there. It's it's an art to that. I'm telling you. And some of the people I've been with that are really good squirrel hunters, a few, were like, I was like, I just marveled at how they could pick stuff out. I guess they had better vision or they just, you probably, you know, you you just size a tree up a certain way, I'm sure, by now. But was there anything to, you know, what do you look for? Because that's, that's one of the, to me, one of the hardest things is finding some squirrels when the woods are completely dead. They're not all in a hole. They're just not moving, you know. Yeah. A lot of times the way they lay on a limb, you'll see a bump on it. When you see that bump, you'll see an ear up at one end of it, you know. He might have some some his tail hanging off the edge, and you might just see the tip of the hair that's hanging off. It's it's just like deer. I mean, you you get where you just kind of naturally pick up on things that are not normal, not natural. Yeah, I, I assume things like when it's when it's cold, you're probably better off looking on a on a sunny limb, or mm-hmm. you know when it's hot, probably on a shady spot. Yeah. Uh, but when that dog trees, they're amazing how they can hide. I mean, they don't just lay up there they'll get in a fork they'll get in a mm-hmm. and, it, and a lot of times if you got a really big tree with big limbs flat you, on the very top of it and you can't see him from either side yep you know i know that i know that old trick of where you know one person will stand still and the other guy will walk around the tree yep. to try to get it to oh, know, yeah. move on it the works branch. pretty good too in the yeah. old pulling the old the old uh vine yeah you know, trying to get yeah. it moving uh, J.J. Keith, I uh, squirrel hunted with him in Louisiana. He had a unique tactic when they would get up there. He had a pocket full of bottle rockets, those <laughs> whistling ones, and he would let them sung ones go up in the tree, <laughs> and the squirrel would come running around. I thought oh. that was pretty cool. So are they That's hiding from the dog, or are they hiding from you? No, they're mm-hmm. hiding from you. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They know immediately when that dog gets there, but they know you're the you're the yeah. bad part of the equation. Yeah. Because I've thought before maybe the dogs would make them turn, but it's like if they see you, they know you're the part that they need to stay away from, and they'll keep that tree between you and them. And Watching your dogs work, how much they look up was amazing to me. Once they hit that, I mean, because you think, I think of always think about a dog's nose being on the ground. But, man, their eyes are to the sky looking. It's Yo, they amazing. know that's where he's at. Yeah. He's up there. You know? <laughs> no, that's, that's just, I, I hope we, I hope people listen to this and say, man, I want to go squirrel hunting again. Because I'm getting excited just thinking about it. I'm so, going. It's, it is. It's yeah. so much fun. And it, what we had for lunch, <clears throat> Dudley, how many bowls of that did He's you have? That's, that's two. Two. I've no. seen it there three times. It was squirrels and dumplings, if mm-hmm. I'm not. It, and it was delicious. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely and delicious. It, it really didn't take that long. I know it's not as good as Miss Evelyn's, but we did it in an instant. It's good. Fight, so. not, I didn't mean to get too comparative, but it's no, just, you're just, right. It's so legendary. Yeah. yeah. So we got to get it out. Everybody's, well, not everybody, but folks have different ways of, of breaking apart a squirrel. Uh, do you have any tips yeah, on? Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, on doing one. that? Well, you know, when I first started skinning them, I cut them across the back and pulled them. And when I right. would get through, I would have as much hair on exactly. him then right. as I yeah. did. So, so you're talking about like cutting them in the middle and then in the top take, of the taking back. their shirt off and Pull, taking their pants off. Right, or right, okay. yeah, exactly. So go ahead. But now <laughs> I, I turn them upside down. I hold them by their tail and I cut across their their back and right underneath the tail. You right, yeah. And then I kind of fan it around both sides of their hip. You're cut, and I used to stand on their tail on their yeah. tail and pull it. But I've got a little device now that I use to hold it. And I just pull him, and when it pulls him, it pulls most of the hide off, and then there'll be one little piece left, and I take catfish skinners, and I pull that piece That's off. That's usually the back feet. Right. Yeah. And then I take some game shears, and I, I just cut all that off, cut his head off. And I told Bobby earlier that I turn him upside, or turn him like just like a deer with his legs down, and I cut both shoulders off. And then I turn him over, and I cut him in the middle, and then cut him in half, so you get that little back piece. Mm-hmm. So when I get through the this. tenderloin. There's it five pieces of squirrel there. That's right. And then whoever gets it, they don't have to try to quarter it and all that stuff. It's ready to go, you know. So you end up with two front legs, two back legs, and the back. You right. Rib cage, you, back, yeah. everything. Tenderloin part. The prime rib. Yeah. <laughs> and you, leave I, rib, you leave the ribs on too, don't you? No, I take them off. You take the ribs off? Wow. I do. I throw that part away. And I've got a bucket. It's got meat on it. And I don't use that bucket for nothing but either fish or game of some kind. And I, and I put them in there. And I pour it out, wash it, pour it out. And you'd be surprised at all the stuff that just keeps. And when I get done, it'll be clean. And then I put it in a bowl. I've got a refrigerator outside. And I soak it in that bowl in that refrigerator for a couple of days on, with some salt. And when it comes out, it's just like chicken. It's just white as it, can be. As yep. it can be. Yeah. And then I put, you know, 15 pieces or so in each bag and just lay them down flat. So they're just stacked up in, in the freezer. You do have to be careful when you put 
those in Ziplocs or vacuum seal them because yeah. the bone will puncture yeah. a hole yeah. if you're not careful. Yeah. You yeah. pay attention to that or you'll have water running. I noticed out he had, you got those super pliable bags, those ones with the wrinkles in them. It's really good. Well, just lay it flat and be yeah. careful. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't or double. It. And I've, I always had to double, do a double mm -hmm. Ziploc to keep it from poking through both of them. So, Mike, I'm looking at you. You've got a young son, Wilkes, who's – just going to be eat up with hunting, you can tell already. Are you thinking, how am I going to get him out here and do this? What's going through your mind? I, we'll actually get in our we'll actually get in our yard, and he'll start sneaking up on them, and I'll, oh, try, wow. I'll try to get him. And then at some point he breaks. You know, I mean, he's three years old. So he's, he's running towards him. Oh, yeah. He'll, <laughs> he'll, like, he'll start off, you know, probably five, ten yards, and the next thing you know he's just running at yeah. them, and then they're gone. And, I mean, he does the same thing with, with birds in the yard. And, I mean, getting him out there – and, and just walking in the woods with him has, has been really cool. But getting him to see him jumping and watching him, he, so cool. he, thinks it's, he thinks it's super cool. So taking him ought to be a that, – that would be a really good introduction to him to the to being mm -hmm. still in the woods. Absolutely. And, and then, too, with the 22, I mean, just the sound. Oof. I mean, I mean being quieter, uh, not as much recoil. I mean, I, I think it would be a, a really good introduction. That would be, be a – how skill level for a little young enough because yeah. I got my rite of passage was the squirrel woods. I'm proud of it, but it wasn't a 22 rifle. It was yeah, a, so I was going to ask. It was how a do 410 it? double barrel and then a, a 20 gauge, yeah, you four, know, double barrel. So where do y'all, 410 with number six shot or something like that, would y'all? Yeah, 20 gauge maybe. Yeah. The trees are very tall. Sometimes I think a 410 might have a hard time reaching the mm -hmm. top. You shoot a full choke or a turkey choke? I or do. Full? Fool. I, I bet Apex would make some squirrel loads. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they them at 100 yards. <laughs> I, I, they're too good to eat. They're too good to eat for that. Oh, man. I, this, is, this has been really good. So, why don't we do this? Uh, Dudley, have you got some uh, some rapid fire questions for George? I do. I yeah, have some actually. more squirrel questions. Well, well, okay. Well, hang on. What, what you got? I, I, you know, I've always heard this, and, and I've never experienced it even growing up. The – the the wolves and squirrels. Oh yeah, we need to talk about yeah. that. Have y'all ever experienced Wolf that? Have you seen a bunch. You have seen them. Always, they had to worry about them in the May season, but we always at the beginning of squirrel season would have issues with them, and then I guess so, first frost or something, they were yeah, gone. That, Rabbits that, too. So yeah. you, you oh, okay. <laughs> when I grew up in South Tella, we had them a lot there. Seems like. But since I've moved down here, I, I really very seldom ever see one. But if you're going to see one, you're going to see it at the beginning of the year yeah. before it gets cold. Once mm -hmm. it gets cold, they're pretty much It gone. seems like they're not as prevalent today. I, I very well. Now, I don't kill as many squirrels as I used to, but I still am around it. And people that have, and I just didn't see it was – it was almost for sure if you had two or three people went out together squirrel hunting early, early whatever, squirrel season, there'd be several. I've never you know. seen them, and I've, I don't know how many of them. It's so what it is, it's a bot fly. Yeah, mm -hmm. bit them or something. It, it, and, the, and so the fly lays lays this egg or whatever, and then where squirrels travel, and then the, it picks up on the squirrel and, and gets in the just under the skin as okay. a host. Right. And it kind of hosts there for a little while. It gets to be about the size of a pecan. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe not. Maybe it'll – Maybe not quite that oh, big. The ones yeah. I saw were, you know, about like Exactly. That. The yeah. end of my little finger is exactly what I A little pecan. Yeah, so, so, a little tiny one. But in, a squirrel might <laughs> but have two three of And I, I, I'd always been told, you know, it didn't hurt. The, the I've squirrels. skinned some, and after you skin them, you really can't even tell where they were that's because right. they're yeah. between the meat and the skin. That's, that's, that's right. Exactly so right. I was always told they made no difference and there was no danger in them. Yeah. Hmm. Some people, you know, <clears throat> I think over in this part of the world, y'all call them wolves. Wolf Yeah. So over in Alabama, I've heard them called warbles. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah. Same Mr. thing. Mr. Young introduced me to them. Other common order. names, warble flies. How about that? Wolf worms. Yeah. Peel flies, warbles, grubs. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Lanny, you got any other questions? What about – look at you. I'm thinking about you and Hayden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for right now, you know, Hayden has, uh, you know, been around us, you know, his whole life. He's 12 now. So, for me, wow. the squirrel hunting is, like Toxie's saying – it's his first step on his own. You know, it's the first thing he's doing on his own. Uh, and it's the first thing I'm comfortable. We're lucky we live in a spot where we've got a, a hundred acres of hardwoods there. It's not mine. It's public. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Uh, but <laughs> nonetheless, he can walk there and coming back. That's so, that's that, so cool. That's so it, important. It's so cool. And like, just listen to him coming back, you know, the trials and tribulations. He's went out there and he got one, you know, then he thought he was going to go get all of them. And he came back with none. <laughs> And talking about his. Oh, they're tough. Yeah, he's just talking about that. I thought I was close to, you know, sneaking up to him and everything else. So, 
um, while I'm not there with him, it's like I'm living through him because I'm reliving the things that I learned through him. Right. I don't need to be there with him because of the stuff he's learning, you know. You right. need to. You you need to but think about the shooting house, the deer, it, which is the rite of it, passage now. And I, I'm not knocking it because that's what most no, of the world does. Right. And we do it too. You're going to do it with Wilkes. We're going to do it's it. It's the great way to but do it. There's no, like, there's no, there's no up. Oh, he's not too big. He's not big enough. He's right. not old enough. Or, you know, all those different things. I mean, it's just like go have fun, tune into the woods. And, and, and they can take it on one-on-one. On one. You don't have to be it's there. Not, to, you don't have to do it. And, it. and it's not sitting there waiting. He's actually interacting. We're the shooting house thing, which it is great. We're sitting there waiting. Oh, I love you know. it. But he is. He's learning to use the trees right. you know, like you were talking about. You learning know, how closer, to snake. Learn how to walk quiet. He came back this time. He's like, Dad, I was way quieter because it rained. You know, and that's the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that – I know, but I forget to tell him. And he yeah, but how much like better that. is them to learn their on lessons own. on their right. own like it's that? Huge. Like the woods it will really teach is. them. Yeah, do so y'all remember your first squirrel? I do. I'm not counting the neighborhood squirrels. I'm talking about when you go squirrel hunting. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Well, I didn't grow up in a neighborhood, so the first one was in my you – know, but I, there's no doubt I remember it. I think it had 11 BBs in it when I was there. So, <laughs> so the more memorable to me, <clears throat> I've told you all the story, was – when I went out on my own and killed the squirrel, that's not right. my first squirrel, but the first time I, he, he turned me loose, like you're talking about. That's what I was doing. And he did, Mr. Fox, my dad was, he was very kind of serious all of a sudden. He said, son, I'm real proud of you. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, he's just kind of saying that like dad's doing, I'm proud of you, son. He said, no, look, when a, when a young man is old enough to go out and take food for the family on his own, is one of the first steps in a boy becoming a man, so I'm real proud of you. And I thought that was – I mean, that's like an old Western movie thing. Oh, you puff But up. that's what – that's the way they were. That's right. You know, and it made me so proud yeah. for him to yeah. put it in those Same words. Way. I'm so, surprised my first squirrel, squirrel was edible because uh, we took it all over the place showing it to people and <laughs> getting pictures with my great aunt and my uncles. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Both sets of grandparents. So before I forget it, yeah. now with you guys having that uh, that hound dog around, oh, yeah. you need to get Hayden a book called Where the Red Fern Grows. Oh, he knows this. We've actually got it. It's on the bookshelf. So we'll you need to again. make sure he reads that. I will. That will He's reading uh, – Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer right now. So, it, Tasha, if you, you mm -hmm. remember when, but if, if you read that and don't cry, there's something wrong with you. I wasn't a squirrel hunting dog, though, was it? It was a coon hunting dog, but it's kind of along the same line. Re George, you probably hadn't read many books now, George, but I bet you remember that one. Huh? <laughs> I've read that one a dozen times. It's well, so I got good. a Will a black and tan be a good squirrel dog? But don't make him read that book. <laughs> <laughs> it's too sad. Yeah, it's going to cry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. That, so, that book is bad as it gets because not only did he lose his dogs, mm -hmm. He moved to town. Oh. I said if he could have stayed in the country and got another dog. It'd been all right. Life would have been okay. <laughs> but he had to go to town. Yeah. That's a great observation. Oh, it, that's a good book. So though. Bobby's referring to this uh, this uh, black and tan dog that I now have. I'm sorry. Look at Dudley. Yeah, he's he's he got another yeah. bowl while we're sitting there talking. <laughs> so is, it, is there a chance a black and tan could make us Very much. Lunch? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do that. He's telling you there's a chance. There's right? a chance. The only bad thing about a hound, the hound hunts for itself. At a cur and a feist, they want to be your partner. The hound goes hunting. He don't really care where you go or if you're coming. The cur and the feist do, and they want to be with you. So they, they're going to stay close. They're going to go hunt. They're going to come back every 15, 30 minutes. And a hound's going to go. The hound's going yonder. You know. And if you can keep up, come on. The squirrel dogs <laughs> I've been with enough. people, it was <laughs> what you said. I never thought about it before, but I clearly can remember. They were so worried about pleasing their boss. Mm -hmm. I mean – Maybe I watched more, George's but, turn around and look at him. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. am I doing yeah. good? You're doing yeah. good. Yeah. All right, come on, hey, Dad. Go. That's yeah. also a don't leave me, boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dudley, well, let's, let's turn to you. We're at a little over We're, an hour. Let's get this up. So we do this uh, thing called George – you don't know rapid about it. Fire. Called rapid fire. It's brought to you by our friends at Springfield Armory, who I'm sure you've had some Springfield Armory pistols through the year, 1911s and all that kind of stuff. I have. So uh, they sponsor this. We're real proud of our relationship. D Lanny will tell you. Dudley asks these questions, and you're, you're best at just answering them as fast as you can. You have no, I mean, it's, it, he's going to give you a couple options. You pick which one you like the best. If you don't like either one of them, you say neither. That's about all right. It. Yeah. And I didn't even get to practice this. No. You, you, you Nobody does. It's you easy. It. Are you ready? I am. Cheese grits or regular grits? Cheese. Sweet or unsweet? Sweet. Gray squirrel or fox squirrel? Either. <laughs> Would you rather hunt squirrel or eat squirrel? Hunt. Turkey hunt or go fishing? Go fishing. 
hunting the hills or hunting the bottoms? In the bottoms. Would you rather eat a coon or eat a possum? Mm, coon. <laughs> Red fern or old yeller? Old yeller. White perch or crappie? Crappie. Gray with an E or gray with an A? Ooh, gray with an E. Louisiana hot sauce or Tabasco? Louisiana hot sauce. Oaks or hickories? Hickories. Lastly, Ray Stevens or Weird Al? Ray Stevens. <laughs> Good answers. That is a perfect score of 100, yeah, my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he nailed it. So Dudley wanted to play some music today by Ray Stevens. Though, what's the name of that song? <sighs> Well, it's, the, you, uh, I mean, it's, it's synonymous with Mississippi. It, it is. We just don't want to get in trouble with Ray Stevens. So, yeah. why don't you just sing it, Dudley? Well, everybody's heard it. You've you know. already the done your day Christmas the squirrel album. went berserk, you know. <laughs> and the Something, first self-righteous church. That's it. What, what town sleep, was it in? Pascagoula, uh, Mississippi. There it is. That is a good song. Home and the squirrel turbo. gets turned loose and everybody goes crazy. and Starts admitting all their fools. Admitting all their sins. <laughs> yeah, and, that's right. It yeah. caused a revival. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, I think I asked this under my breath earlier. Have you ever been bit by a squirrel? Yes, my pet. Yeah, me too. I, I bet it hurts. It's common, very common. Oh, let me tell you what. If you are hunting, be sure he's – that's what I told Hayden. I said, look, if you shoot one, be sure he's dead because you think you grabbed hold of a bobcat if you don't. I <laughs> promise you, tear you if up. I had the pet, so I've been always been scared to death of touching one. Me too. Too no. soon. Mine wow. bit me right here yep. and Ooh. didn't let go. <laughs> so Richie, what have we got? What 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 have we got next? All right, next it's time for our trivia game. And we're gonna call it "Win Something from Toxie's Closet." Oh, uh, wait, 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 Richie, more Richie. stuff. There's oh. a, there's no, a it's not, I thought oh, you guys oh. called it uh, "Annoy Toxie." <laughs> Richie, <laughs> both. sorry, Did Bye, Bobby. The whole thing? Sorry, it says don't say that if Toxie's in the studio. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> oh Richie, you're driving me crazy. I've been man. I've been so disrespecting now. I'm used to it. <laughs> What? Uh, <laughs> all right, so, Mac, why don't you take over? So, what are we doing, trivia? Yeah. Yes, all right, so we're playing for a Primos gun case. Nice. And the contestant is Josh3415. Who does he need to email? Uh, if, gamekeepers at mossyoak.com if mm -hmm. you win, Josh. And, if guys, if y'all have any ideas for us for – podcast you can email us also at gamekeepers at mossyoak.com so we ask you the question if you get it right josh wins a prize if you don't get it right we give josh your home address and you guys can, <laughs> can work all that out so. okay all right so here's the question it's a true or false female nutria have nipples on their back false well, now, let's, let's, let's not – don't answer so fast, George. <laughs> well, you didn't say that before. Yeah, he was yeah, still in rapid-fire mode. Think think about the – yeah, okay, this isn't rapid-fire. Think about that question. Now, where nutrients live and the environment and, and whatnot, just think about it a little bit before you answer. Okay. <laughs> you want to – okay, now let's go Let's go with it. I'm False. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. So the answer is true. Uh, the females have nipples on their backs to allow their young to nurse while they're in the water. Uh, female nutria give birth to litters up to 13 and go back Oof. into heat in two days. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Basically, no, no they're pregnant I, all year. No wonder I hate them so much. Basically, they're pregnant all I year. Just, Is that what you said? <laughs> I literally got an invoice today for the rebuilding of a major impoundment that I own because of nutria rats. They, they Swiss cheesed it. So bad, even having my own equipment, track hoe, back hoe, dump truck, dozers, all of that, we could not repair it. It had to completely be reconstructed because of nutrients. So, and it was bad. Mm. Eat more, we should eat more nutria. Yeah. Have y'all started an eradication program we'll on try them? Tried to, yeah. But yeah. I mean, even then, it's a big, big lake with a really wide dam. And so it's just, it was just about impossible. Yeah. So the one thing they I'll say this from building ponds, it's a different subject, but you brought up nutrient. Uh David Bryan in Scuba is the best pond builder I've ever seen. Well he put bull panel, the lake you love the most at Sledge. It's your favorite lake. Yeah. And I've never had a problem with beaver and nutrient in the dam. He put bull panel all the way across the length of the dam, right at the water level, and then huh. put six inch dirt over that. And so this time we put a hog wire all the way the length of the dam underneath and then covered that with six inches of dark so i hope we fixed it this time hey that's a hell of a gamekeeper tip right yeah. there and it worked i tell you what i thought it was crazy when yeah. we did it the first time smaller mesh if you can get it but we 
as you know where that lake is, it should have eaten up with nutra oh, yeah. and beavers. That's in the middle yeah. of the woolly swamp. Yes, sure. and it worked. So just <laughs> as a little small tip for the pond builders, if you have nutra, they will destroy your hard work if you don't be careful that's a great tip so josh look we're sorry about that but uh maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll next send, time josh. i will uh, say we're gonna send you a gun case since gosh. it's since it's my closet yeah. i would say go ahead <laughs> and send it to yeah, it yeah. <laughs> okay so uh did we answer all the questions that people had written in about i think so mm-hmm. what about it what rob early season versus late season or? yeah i think george addressed that a little bit you Bunch, like early yeah. season or late season better for squirrel hunting it depends. Just depends. If, if I'm still hunting, I like early. If I'm dog hunting, I like late. Mm-hmm. I'm going to answer that one for George. I'm going to go back to our phone and doctor disturbance. They said, what's the best time to burn? He said, any time you can. Uh-huh. So yeah. I'm going to bet you George's answer that's is, right. what's your favorite time is any time I can go. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. And I did have one more question. I want to have to include this. You talk about den trees and nests. I understand. Is there a co-relationship with, between those wood – you know the the females be in the dens and the males be in the nest, or is there just is there typically a den and then nests around it, or is it just kind of whatever? A den tree is normally just a big hollow tree that's got holes in it. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that's where they den at. They'll be inside there. Multiple squirrels in there. Right, mm-hmm. and then a nest is just a big leafy thing. It's in a in a tree, you know. And I don't think I've seen you know females with babies in nests and and vice and versa. Gotcha. So I guess it's just whatever they have available. And I think cold nights that they like support each other. They they might get in there together and say, Hey, let, let's stay warm, yeah. Yeah, spoon a little bit. I think they'll we'll have to put a camera up in a in a hollow in a tree. That'd be a good idea. Well you've probably through the years seen found a den tree and, and maybe hunting late in the afternoon and you see them go into it or something and you've been there in the morning and you might pick off four or five pretty quick. When I was growing up there was a den tree close to where me and my friends hunted. And we would walk down the railroad. I know you wasn't supposed to hunt on the railroad, but like you said, maybe the statute of limitations has run out. But we'd walk <laughs> down the railroad, and when we got close to that tree, we'd all okay get quiet because we're close to the big den tree. And I don't think we ever went by that tree and didn't kill a squirrel. Hmm. And, I mean, we walked by it for years and years. So I don't know how many lived in it. I don't know if some moved in after. Right. But there always seemed to be squirrels at that, at that tree. Okay, hold that thought right there. I'm going to come back to you. I want you to tell a story you told a little bit earlier, but I'm looking at Mac. This episode, Mac, we, we had, uh, is brought to you by Spartan, right? Right. What is the information Spartan wanted us to provide? So there's two cameras. There's the Go Live and the Go Live 2. Uh, they both come in Mossy Oak Country. And the cool thing is you can have a shared data plan. So it's it's a way for you to ha- start a data plan and then add an additional camera for, I think, $5. $5, mm-hmm. that's right. And so that's what I have. You always give me a hard time about texting, but a lot of times I'm checking He's my Spartan camera. Spartan. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. That's one of the biggest advantages of Spartan to me. It's not individual data plans. You can pull, 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 pull multiple cameras on one data plan. And you yeah. can have 10. You can have up to 10. Yeah, and you can turn them off, turn them on. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's pretty there cool. There you go. Good to see you. Love it. Look at Dudley's on Spartan right now. Yeah. I'm run, I've got two cameras running. Hey, the live thing's really cool, too. Um, oh, it's very, especially good. for duck hunters now. It's, yeah. I think Toxie's found that. It's a great way to check a duck hole without busting birds. So. Don't need to walk up in there. Yeah. So, and also, guys, this uh, we've got this uh, the, the Uncle Ray's giveaway going on. Oh, yeah, the boat full of chips. It, 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 it's a great promotion. And I want to make – I don't know what this is, but I'm told we have a link in our show notes. That's right. So, uh, so guys, if you're – you know, listen to this, watching this, you can go to the show notes and link and sign up to you might sign up. You might want to see our boat with a bunch of chips. I just it. saw that boat. It is a beautiful it's boat. It's out back, baby. It is it's a awesome. beautiful boat. Yeah. It really is. And Dudley's gotta, slowly eating all the chips. So and, yeah. I, yeah. and I'm gonna tell you what, if you haven't tried Uncle Ray's potato chips, you're missing out. Yeah. They yeah. are really good product. We need some more. We ate all of our prizes we were supposed to send out. Great duck season. Dudley, snack. <laughs> Dudley ate Bullshit. all of them. Yeah, well, yeah, I have so. to admit, I open them and then I take a few, then I take them to Dudley, and then he knocks the rest of them. Yeah, yeah they just do that. <laughs> so, guys, the winter issue, uh, we just sent it to the printer. Thank you, Dudley, for finishing up those edits there. And Dudley kind of reads through it one time and corrects all the grammar. And that's amazing thing. what he catches. Yeah, he he's good at correct making finding yeah, mistakes Critique. that others have made. Yeah. So, so thank you, Dudley. That one's it. It's got a really cool cover. It's got a it's pintail. The, it's the one of the bulls. Hey, it's different. Dudley's one of the few times you get to wag your finger at Bobby. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. So, George, I'm looking at you. Before we got this thing rolling, you told a story. When you were growing up in wherever, Etowah, wherever South that was, Tilla. you told a story about driving across one night 
and uh, seeing the, a Black Panther run across the road. Would you tell that oh. story, please? Are you trying to make fun of me? No, I'm not. Okay. I think he's you do fun that enough. Of me. Yeah. <laughs> when I was growing up at South Teller, there was a big uh, story got started that there was a Black Panther living in that area, and everybody was seeing it, and everybody was hearing it scream like a woman and all this stuff. And I had coon dogs at the time, and I was dying to tree this Black Panther. So me and my buddy was going coon hunting one night. We were riding down the road. And the panther crossed the road in front of us. And we said, there he is, that's him. So we threw the coon dogs out. And it wasn't just a few minutes. They had him treed. And one of us ran to my school teacher's house because he had. we knew he'd have a gun. We didn't have a gun. And we got back to the tree, and it was a big black house cat. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me, Bobby? Uh, I, I, that's, a good, <laughs> that's a good story. It, it, everybody has a panther story. Mm-hmm. Mine's yeah. not a panther, but. I do have a story. Yeah, you do. He's always got a story. Well, look, I'm looking around the room. Is anybody else? What have, is there any? What did we learn, Dudley? That's a deep. It, it really. Dudley learned how to. He, I learned he, he a learned lot. How fully can get on squirrel and dumpling. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> lot, uh, you know, if you're an outdoors person, you're missing out on a little bit of life enrichment. No it, doubt. If yes. you don't get. And if you got young and I'm yeah. gonna go get I'm gonna go get a yeah. suppressor and put it I in the toys. It takes I've a while. It's wor- I've, I've said it before. It is the best investment of your time as far as getting a suppressor there is. I'm going to get one. Yeah, yeah I've always there, waited there, till there February. I mean, I squirrel hunted a lot when I was a kid, yeah. but uh, I'm going to take little Dud squirrel hunting this weekend. There you go. Good for you. Yeah. It's just so much fun with the kids, and it's so much fun on your own too, and with dogs. This is a great. I time. mean, we we'll end up getting some deer meat for the for the freezer. That but, squirrel uh, and dumplings was delicious. I'm gonna walk so around good. in the woods yeah. and. Yep. Look George, at trees. you ever watch our TV show on Tuesday night? I do. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I knew somebody would. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. Well, we appreciate that, George. We really. Do. I enjoy it. Well, you've been a lot of fun. Tox, did you learn anything? At, a bunch, but I, I, look, I, I always learn from George. Yeah, that's right. And Dudley. And, and Lanny sometimes, too. Ah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah. All right, Mac, you got anything to add? Richie did not fall asleep, so that's a good He's one. killing it over no, there. No, no, you just you weren't paying attention when he did uh, this time. Uh, y'all are supposed to alert me when he does. So We got to post that video. We, we do. George, here's our producer over here, esteemed producer of this podcast. And we look at him the other day. Lanny gets my attention. I look over, and Richie's eyes are closed. He is. He, but Richie's like a, a sleeping ninja. You know, you right. can't catch him. So we're being real try, quiet. And then he opens his eyes, and they look directly at Bobby because he knows what's going on. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, well, this has been fun. Robin, have you got anything? We, I think we've done it all. So let's get on out of here, right. guys. Uh, why don't you say goodbye, Dudley? Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, Mac Mac. Mm-hmm. Thank you.